I'm Larry Chen. I've been shooting car culture all over the world for the past 18 years. From the best builds to the fastest races, I've seen it all. In this series, I'm highlighting the gearheads that inspire me in our generation. It's hard to talk about drifting today without mentioning the name Adam LZ, and for good reason. The man has built an empire on YouTube with nothing but a vlog camera and himself. From BMX beginnings to the transition into drifting, like many action sports individuals, Adam covered it all on his YouTube channel. He's now one of the most influential personas in the space of drifting and car culture at large. In this episode, we take a look at a day in this busy man's life. Whatever, we'll figure it out. Body's turn, eyes. Hey. Hi. You're the presenter, so you talk to the camera and then talk to me. I engage with you. Okay. I feel like that's the I, move. I, I. All right, guys, we're with Adam LZ. Adam, how are you doing? <laughs> what, are you doing? <laughs> what are we doing? All right, ready? We are at Adam's place. This is the compound, and we're back. We've been here before, but we're always stoked to come back because there's just so many cool things here. How are you doing? I'm good, man. Everyone's in town. FD Orlando right around the corner. Stoked to have you guys back here. Yeah, so this is a really, really busy week. The entire week is just packed with all this cool stuff. And this is your playground. Today, we're going on a little JDM cruise downtown. And then we were going to try to shoot some golden hour photos. So we're about to take the chaser out. Marco stopped me because we didn't have a trans mount on the car. We play a lot of musical parts with cars sometimes when we're short. This is the main shop area. Mm -hmm. This is actually where you do pretty much all the work on your personal vehicles. What's going on here? So right now, today, you know, we're starting to lay out the A90 build. The S15 needs a transmission, and then we've honestly been cleaning because we know you guys are visiting. But uh, the latest projects are really just kind of the giveaway car, my first E46, and uh, fixing the E36. So one of the things I noticed coming here last time, you guys move so fast. So we came a couple days in a row, and you know, one day the engine is out of the car, the next day it's in, and then the next day, you guys start plumbing and then we skip a couple months, we come back and for example, like you guys were working on the R32, it's done now. So you guys move really fast. Yeah, and that car actually was a little slower because we had the engine in and out a couple times for some other weird stuff. But a lot of it just comes down to planning. You know, good planning and having accessibility to parts. Having Drift HQ right there has saved us so many times. It's like we need a fitting, right? So many builds get held out by fittings. Just walk over, boop, boop, boop. Grab a fitting off the shelf then we're good. Let's spit off a couple quick facts. I know there's a lot of structures mm -hmm. on this compound. How many structures is it total? I think there's 26 separate buildings here. And then how many acres is this? 30 acres. This is your slice of Florida. Like you own a big portion <laughs> of the state. <laughs> Not that much, but... No, it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, the point is that it's your playground. It's your place of work. It is honestly like the dream place for any car nerd. Let's check out some of your builds. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Okay. Out of your entire collection, without a doubt, I think this is my favorite car. Yeah. It is so cool. It is perfect in every way. What are we looking at here? So this is a V-Spec R34 GTR Midnight Purple 3. We originally were gonna do a simple build as they all start and it turned into a full restoration. So pretty much every nut and bolt, every bracket, every subframe on this car is either new, been powder coated, refreshed, zinc coated. Definitely our most long-term project, but I think it's the best example of what uh, we're capable as a shop. And Johan's fabric especially knocked this build out of the park. In terms of LZ spec, like this is, this is a perfect example of so like. I think this is like, past LZ spec. Like this car, I feel like almost made us realize, okay, that was really cool, but it almost got boring because we spent so long on it. But when I show you the white chaser, I feel like that is the perfect happy medium of LZ spec. Cause when you see that car, it's almost the same attention to detail, but instead of like a, say this was a six month build, that car was like a three week, four week build. LZ spec involves a lot of ADD of not being able to spend too much time on one project. <laughs> Well, since you guys are building a lot of these cars for content, you have to structure a lot of what you're actually building around the content release. Uh, I would say I'm kind of lucky in the sense where my builds aren't really scheduled around the content. We're just kind of doing the stuff we need to do. It's more so we find a way to work the content in with the build schedule, you know, knowing that, okay, 
this car is gonna have a boring day where we're just doing plumbing, so maybe I'll go and I'll focus on filming something else that day. So this is your most recent build? Yeah, I think so. Tell us what try. this is. This is a crazy R32. Yeah, so this four-door was a drift car at one point. Turned into being a really fun daily like street car, AC. It made like 600 horsepower. And I kept like building and building on it until eventually the motor let go on the dyno. It actually like snapped the snout of the crank. So I kind of went from mild to wild. So now this is an RB28, HKS crank, Neo head, big Kelford cams, oversized valves, and makes like around 800 wheel. But what's cool about it is with drag radials in the back, it can actually put the power down and it sounds sick and it's a blast to drive. It is just so opposite world. Like instead of building a GTR, you build a four-door rear-wheel drive GTST. Crazy. It just kind of happened, but it's a blast to drive and it's easy, you can go get groceries in it. And it, I'm really excited to start driving it more. I really like the style. I love the green. I also love the red tinted windows. It's very JDM. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's like you just plucked it out of Tokyo and just dropped it into this area. <laughs> it, had a, it had a crazy livery on it for a while and I loved it, but it just got too much attention. And because I like to drive the car so much, I just, like I would never take it to Starbucks's and all, they were like looking at it. And... So this car will basically become identical to this yellow car in terms of drivetrain. So it'll have the new style R154, it'll have a big single turbo, aftermarket manifold, it'll sound sick, drive sick, standalone, flex fuel. Right now it is manual, but it's the older Mark III transmission. Um, the engine stock, it runs great, it drives great, but I wanna like make this car LZ spec, paint the bay, make it super dialed. Outside though, it looks amazing. It looks so good, I love it. This car is really special. This is yeah, this your. Is my first car. Your ever. first car ever. Yeah. So you actually bought this back recently. I've been searching for it for like over a year now. And it was in this condition? Uh, well, I put bumpers on it and fixed a couple things and put wheels and coilovers on it. And it was rough, like abandoned in a field, gross. W what did they say when that you came up to them, were, were they like, are you so crazy? So friend, a friend of mine bought it. And the uh -huh. funny thing is the person that owned it was actually a subscriber to my channel and had no idea it was my car. <laughs> and it still has like stickers from when I owned the car too. That is awesome. Couple of other cars here. We had a chance to shoot this last time we were here. I feel like this car is a good example of LZ spec. It's simple, it looks good, but it works good. And like, we didn't really spend too much time on it. I love this car. This is my favorite car I own, hands down. That says a lot about this in terms of like driving dynamics. You just like big cars? It's just comfortable, it's usable. I like cars that I can drive every day and like, they don't do anything weird. This car's got good AC, it looks great. The hood shuts. <laughs> Sometimes. You know how it goes. Yeah. Couple more special cars. This one, I think out of all of your cars, I have the most photographs of yeah. this car, without a doubt. You've kind of like made a, a, a movement in Formula Drift with this car to have something that looks good. <laughs> Does that make sense? I know what you're saying. Yeah. I appreciate it. I mean, it looks so good. And plus, I love, love, love all the memes that people tagged you in of basically this color fade. Or Dude, just... it, it's crazy. It's like branded a, a gradient. Yeah. It, well, it's like the most brilliant accidental thing ever because now anything we do with a fade is like almost just like branded us. Yeah, it's great. This BMW is awesome too. Thanks. I've had a chance to shoot it, but not with this livery. This is pretty new. Yeah, so both, both these cars don't have a motor in them right now. They're both getting refreshed. But yeah, this thing rips. It has the old motor from that car. It's like, we call it the baby S15. Ooh. This is basically like a, a baby version of my FD car. And this thing is absolutely insane. Yeah, good old Z-Roy. The burnout mobile. This is just built for burnouts. Pretty much. Nothing else. This is like the prime example of a YouTube car with no utility other than fun and content. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Most of my cars I try to build to drive them and like make them be usable cars. This one, just ignorant. I'm excited about this because anytime we actually get to shoot action here, it is super special. It's just like drifting in the jungle. Is that a good way to put it? I'd say that's fair. Yeah. So what are we looking at here? So this car was actually at a buddy of mine's shop, Monster Performance, and it was sitting in the back totaled and I was buying it for parts. And when we got it, it was like one of those things where like, there might be enough car left to like make it a complete car. So we kind of got it thrown back together, had it on the frame machine a couple times, put some fiberglass on it and it looked like a whole car and it lasted a drift week, lasted oh, two drift weeks. This is your drift week car? Yeah. Oh. So it's like built to be simple and reliable and comfortable enough to be driven across country and still shred. Yeah, this one is the one that got hit pretty bad on your door and mm -hmm. you had to go to Home Depot to make a new window. Yeah, it's simple though. Stock 1J, RM54, single gear turbo, rips, sounds sick. 
it's awesome. It's perfect. It's perfect for shredding the compound. Let's go check out your collection. With the usual layout that I'll run here is come down this straight, throw like big angle into here. If you like run the right line, you can run like third gear and run a consistent arc all the way around this. And then you can switch back here and then you can carry this out for a while. And then this is kind of like a little donut area. So you could come in and go left or you yeah. come in and go around. I've run the FD car here on kill and like it works. <laughs> So I would just I would just drive with whatever you drove at Hyperfest or whatever you know is right. consistent with the car. Definitely leave enough dig in the car. Can I get my stills camera? Yeah. For one? Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> Holy sh I'm gonna let this cool down for a second, okay? All right. Just tell him to hang tight. I'm gonna help try and open. Okay. This is the life of the LZ compound. We were just getting shots of Adam driving his chaser, and then Dmitry Bruski, Formula Drift driver, he just jumps in, we do tandem, I'm shooting out of it. We slam to a halt right here, Adam jumps out, jumps into this other Jay-Z X90 to do a dyno run. Like, that's his life. That is so insane. And then now, after they're done with that dyno, now we're gonna go tandem again. <laughs> Dude, that thing sounds so good. When you were following close, I literally had to pull my camera in because A, I would lose both of my hands. B, I would definitely lose the camera. Yeah. That was so insane. And I guess that's just the normal day in the life of Adam LZ, right? I guess. That, that, I mean, okay. You gotta come here more often. Yeah, I, I do. you come, it like forces us to do cool shit. Well, we like to be the reason to force you guys to do cool stuff. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, the day's not over, because we're gonna go on a crazy 10-car JDM cruise right now. Let's do it. Let's do it. Cool. Right.
I'm sweating in places that I didn't realize I could sweat from. Didn't even know that. It's just because I haven't stopped shooting because there's just so many beautiful shots to be had. This is quintessential Florida. You got some palms, nice colors. Cops that don't care that we're here. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank this guy, really, for showing us a good time, shredding it, absolutely just killing it, and then going on an epic cruise just like a good, good photo cruise. Thank you, dude. So I guess next step is what? Bring your actual Formula Drift car out here? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, I'm All done. All right. Let's do it. You heard it first. Here, he's gonna do it. Let's do next it. Next time. Next time. Thank you guys for watching my new Haggerty show. I really wanted to feature automotive trendsetters in our generation. Without Pennzoil, this series wouldn't be possible. They are enthusiasts like us, they believe in car culture, and they want to keep it alive. Pennzoil supports a lot of racing, drifting, and hill climb, and everything in between. They also support a lot of our friends. On top of that, we run Pennzoil in all of our project cars. I hope you like this content because we have a lot coming your way.